It is absolutely imperative that we work with the Costa Rican Department of Biological Preserves to establish a set of rules for the preservation and isolation of that island. These creatures require our absence to survive, not our help. And if we could only step aside and trust in nature, life will find a way. Hey, Ember Miners! Welcome back to the Ember Mine. Today, we'll be continuing our Jurassic Myths series. Our next installment covers the controversial classification of the Lost World Pterosaur seen at the end of the film. Whether it is the famous Pteranodon Longiceps or Geosternbergia sternbergii. <laughs> As always, with any script Bob writes, it's time for some unnecessary exposition. Pteranodon was first described in 1876 by Charles Marsh. It hails from the Kansas rock formation of the Neobrara Chalk, dating back to the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous and home to many species from InGen's list, such as Pteranodon longiceps, Geosternbergia, Sternbergi, and Tylosaurus Crorager. Speaking of Pteranodon and Geosternbergia, there are many debates in the paleontology community about the classification of these particular genera. Due to their similar anatomy, it's been heavily debated as to whether or not the Geosternbergia is a separate species of Pteranodon or if its large, flashy crest is enough to justify as its own genus. Some Ambermine members support the classification of Pteranodon Sternbergi, but we're still going to refer to it as Geosternbergia just to avoid any confusion. Following the success of Jurassic Park in 1993, an animated TV series started development, which was going to feature Geosternbergia, and even labeled it as Pteranodon. Unfortunately, the project never aired and was cancelled. For the production of the Lost World Jurassic Park, an extended worker village scene was planned for the finale, starring a flock of Pteranodons. According to the storyboards of the film, these were meant to be Geosternbergia. However, some storyboards even show Pteranodon, implying both might have been seen and planned for the film. Both species had maquettes made for production, and even a large feathered puppet based on Pteranodon was constructed. But unfortunately, the scenes were scrapped and replaced by a smaller escape scene in a severely downsized compound in favor of the San Diego ending. With the only remnant of this scene being the barely seen Pteranodon dino sheet Roland Timbo had in the game trail featuring the productions Geosternbergia concept art, and the name Pteranodon. Oh, and a side note, the skull in the corner seems to be a Pteranodon longiceps skull. Luckily, ILM did reintroduce the Pteranodon at the very end of the film, following John Hammond's Life Finds a Way monologue. However, this new design doesn't seem to match any of the original designs from the production. The animal is skinnier, with bat-like wings, no feathers, and a thin, hooked beak. Outside of the Lost World film, there are many homages to these many designs for the Pteranodon, such as the Lost World arcade game featuring the maquette Geosternbergia design, but of course being referred to as Pteranodon. The next one closely resembled the film's CGI model is the Kenner Steel Beak, which we desperately hope will one day come back as part of the Mattel Classic line. Speaking of Mattel, 
two recent toy releases including both the Legacy and Hammond Collection Geosternvergia, which are hilariously even called Geosternvergia. Finally, we have the JP 30th Anniversary Captives line, Geosternvergia alongside of Giaroslav's beautiful artwork. A toy called Geosternvergia, yet based on the ILM CGI model for Tyranid on Longiceps. Now, it wasn't meant to be called Geosternvergia, as people who worked on this project have stated it was a mistake in production but too late to correct the product in the time of their release. Now, for the controversy, is the Pteranodon from the Lost World Jurassic Park Geosternvergia, aka Pteranodon Sternvergi, or Pteranodon Longiceps? Well, the answer is a little complicated. There are many different things to take into account, but from a purely canonical perspective, it's probably Pteranodon Longiceps. That's what it says in the style guide, even stating that it's specifically not Geosternvergia. Considering that's the one we see on screen, and assuming the claims that the scene wasn't Kelly Malcolm's dream, it makes sense that its true classification is Pteranodon Longiceps. However, many fans state otherwise, and that not only is Pteranodon from the Lost World actually Geosternvergia, but it is in fact a female. Just to clarify, before going any further, this is just headcanon but one that is widely used and accepted by Jurassic fans. The details vary slightly between groups, but for the most part, are generally the same. The idea is instead of the large crested Geosternvergia design simply not being canon, it is instead the male version of the female Pteranodon seen in the films. I suppose it makes sense for the male to have some sort of precedence on Isla Sorna, since the Geosternvergia is seen on screen through concept art. And it would be weird if Engine just used the wrong species by mistake, when in reality it's more of a production error because they were originally going to use Geosternvergia. But why does the female resemble a male Pteranodon Longiceps? Why does it have the long crest? To answer this question, we are going to develop a little of our own headcanon to expand upon this concept. As with many things in Jurassic, if there's some sort of biological inconsistency, it can likely be explained by genetic engineering, and in this case, frog DNA. Frog DNA is the only confirmed modern genetic donor used in the original trilogy, with no examples or evidence of other species used until Jurassic World. Of course, there are other species like birds and reptiles in the novel, but we're specifically talking movie canon. In this video. And until something or someone says otherwise, we only have evidence of frogs. Two frogs to be exact, the yellow banded poison dart frog and the Arusha reed frog. The yellow banded poison dart frog was used in the creation of the Dilophosaurus to explain why it has the ability to spit venom. As for why it has a frill, Bob does have some headcanon explaining that and wants to save it for a future video. It was also used in the creation of the first confirmed iteration of Velociraptor, but it failed due to a genetic incompatibility and was replaced with the Arusha reed frog. The Arusha reed frog has only one confirmed use in the second confirmed iteration of Velociraptor, which we can assume to be the lowland Velociraptor from the first and second films. The reason why is because the Arusha reed frog has specifically the ability known as sequential hermaphroditism, which is the ability for an animal to spontaneously change its sex, like the velociraptors are known to do. But what if we tried applying it to these inland pteranodons? Genetic engineering isn't perfect, and we're far from knowing exactly what the genome is capable of, let alone bringing back extinct species. We know that DNA decays over time and that when InGen extracted their prehistoric DNA, they had to fill their genetic codes with that of frogs. But if the DNA doesn't decay in the same spaces, then the effect of the genetic engineering won't be the same between species despite using the same frogs. What if 
instead of giving the Pteranodon sequential hermaphroditism, like it did with the Velociraptor, it changed how their sexual dimorphism worked. Maybe it gave the female Pteranodons male-like features. But through some weird mix of frog and Pteranodon DNA, instead of giving it the features of a Pteranodon Cernbergi, it gave the females the features of the male Pteranodon longiceps. Now, we're not geneticists, and we know very little about genetic engineering, but we're also going to guess you, dear viewer, probably don't know either. So, you can't prove us wrong. And if by some miracle you are a geneticist and you can prove us wrong, we would love to hear about it in the comment section down below. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of our videos when we upload them. We have a lot of exciting things planned for the Lost World Month and the upcoming Jurassic June. So stay tuned, and we'll see you all down in the Ember Mine. Hey, Ember Miners! Thanks for watching today's video. Be sure to click the subscribe button on your way out and click the bell icon to be notified of our videos when we upload them.